but the Ukrainian people, Ukrainian people have a lot of backbone. They have a lot of guts, and I'm sure you're observing it. And I don't mean just the military, which is we've been trained in since back when they uh, Russia moved into uh, in, in the southeast southeast um, Ukraine, but also the average citizen. Look at how they're stepping up. Look at how they're stepping up. And you're going to see when you're there, and some of you have been there, you're going to see, you're going to see women, young people standing, standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank, just saying, I'm not leaving. I'm holding my ground. They're incredible. But they take a lot of inspiration from us. And you know, a woman who just died, the Secretary of State, used to have an expression. She said, we are the essential nation. It sounds like a bit of a hyperbole, but the truth of the matter is, you are the organizing principle around which the rest of the world is, the free world is moving. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. God bless you all, and may God... Good morning from Athens on this Sunday morning, and I thought I would give my morning update as to what's going on in the news and in, uh, in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. And we had, uh, well, well, you saw the segment. You saw the two videos from uh, from Joe Biden on his visit to uh, Brussels, his meeting with NATO's with NATO, and then in uh, Poland, and the speech that he gave in Poland. And uh, you know, Biden is just saying the quiet parts out loud, isn't he? So you take the first uh, video that he uh, was speaking to the to the 82nd Airborne, I believe, American troops based in Poland. And he talks about how those American troops are going to uh, to be in Ukraine. Now, after he gave this speech, of course, you know, everyone's ears perked up and, and all kinds of red lights started going off. Is, is the U.S. going to be sending troops to, uh, to Ukraine? Are they sending troops? And uh, the White House immediately uh, walked it back. They said, no, no, the U.S. has, uh, has no plans to send American troops into Ukraine and uh, Biden misspoke and they just they pretty much just walked the whole thing back but uh, is the U.S. going to send troops to Ukraine I, I think that Biden somewhere in his scripts or somewhere as he was uh, hearing people talk like the real people who are making the policy not Joe Biden the people behind Joe Biden and puppeteering Joe Biden as he heard those people talk, I think he just kind of internalized what they were saying and just uh, ad-libbed and blurted it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think it's in the works. Now, does it mean that the U.S. is going to send troops to, to Ukraine? No, but there's no doubt that Biden overheard a certain faction of people who are running the show in his White House talk about sending troops to, uh, to Ukraine and perhaps that's in the context of a false flag or something like that. Probably in the context of two things, either in the context of somehow getting Poland involved in the west of Ukraine, making a move on the west of Ukraine, in which I imagine American troops would be, would be activated there, and in the context of a false flag. Now, the whole uh, NATO peacekeepers, Poland getting into Ukraine, that's been shot down. Um, but that's always under the guise of NATO and always under the guise of peacekeepers. It doesn't rule out the fact that Poland and the U.S. may actually be cooking up something for the west of Ukraine, kind of outside of NATO. And I say that because, you know, who, who, is, who are the two countries that are, that are running the show as far as what's going on in Ukraine? Who are the two countries? What are the two countries that are, that are leading the charge in uh, in Ukraine and trying to, to get the U.S. involved in Ukraine or, or sending weapons in Ukraine or uh, propping up Zelensky. For God's sake, Zelensky is probably in Poland. So I, I would say that it's the U.S. and Poland may be cooking up something. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't doubt it. So if that is the case, then I would not be surprised at all if... Uh, if the U.S. is going to provide support for, uh, for for Poland to make a move on the west of Ukraine, outside of the whole peacekeeper thing, that's 
That dog that you're hearing, that's that's the dog <laughs> that you're hearing <laughs> in the background. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's possible. No doubt that Biden overheard something and he just kind of blurted it out as he was speaking, as he so often does. You know, he, he goes off on these ad libs as he's giving these scripted speeches and when he goes off on these ad libs, everyone's kind of saying, oh my God, <laughs> what's, what's Sleepy Joe going to say now, you know, in one of his famous ad libs. So in this instance, he talked about sending the U.S. into Ukraine. I, I have no doubt that it's in the works. Does it mean it's going to happen? No, but there's no doubt that there's, uh, there are certain factions within the White House that are, that are planning and preparing this. And another way that they can get U.S. troops into Ukraine is a false flag and a chemical uh, weapons false flag. I think everyone that's watching this video and uh, that's been following the Durand, myself, Alexander, uh, other channels as well that have, uh, that have been reporting on the conflict in Ukraine accurately, uh, truthfully trying, trying to report on the conflict in Ukraine. I think we all understand that uh, they're cooking up a false flag. I mean, Biden says it now during every speech. Stoltenberg said it during his speech. Um, they're all talking about a chemical weapons false flag. And, and it's the same script from Syria. They're, they're too lazy to think of something else. So they're just going to pull this, the script out of uh, the playbook from Syria, and they're going to try to implement it in Ukraine. Uh, does it mean that it's going to be successful? No. Does it mean that Russia may not uh, intercept it and prevent it? Sure, Russia may get, a, get ahead of it and prevent it. But there's no doubt they're going to try some sort of chemical false flag. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a real false flag. It could be like done on some soundstage in, in Hollywood. Uh, I'm being absolutely serious, for God's sakes. The, the president of the United States is, is uh, working out of uh, a soundstage across from uh, the White House. So, you know, Zelensky, for all we know, and I'm starting to actually... I'm not 50-50 on this anymore. I'd say I'm more like 75-25 in uh, leading towards the fact that Zelensky is in Poland. Uh, I don't think there's a, I don't want to say there's no doubt, but I don't know. I, I, I highly doubt he's in Kiev. I really highly doubt it. I mean, when you looked at the, uh, the photos from the meetings that Biden had with uh, the defense minister of Ukraine, and the foreign minister of Ukraine, so it, was the, it was Biden, it was uh, Biden officials, Polish officials, and then you had the uh, defense minister and the foreign minister of Ukraine in Warsaw having a meeting to discuss what's next, to plan and to plot what they're going to do next. And uh, the Ukraine uh, defense minister, by the way, came out of the meeting and said he's, very, he's, he's, uh, he's optimistic. He's, he's cautiously optimistic, I think was the quote that he used. And, uh, you, know, you know, they're cooking up something. You know that Poland, the U.S., and and Zelensky and, you know, his, his team, his government, who's probably in Warsaw, <laughs> they're probably in Warsaw, they're cooking up something. You know, Zelensky's giving speeches and he's making the rounds on, on Zoom video and he's got his foreign minister and his defense minister in Warsaw as well. What are they doing? These guys are moving around really, really easy, aren't they? All these top, Pol all the, all these top Ukraine uh, officials. For, for being stuck in a city in Kiev that is now surrounded by the Russian military, for which everyone agrees is surrounded by the Russian military, whatever side you take, everyone's in agreement, Russia has surrounded Kiev. Okay, the collective West is saying Russia wants to enter Kiev, but Ukraine is, is pushing back on that. The Russians are saying, we don't want to enter Kiev. We've just got it surrounded and we're just pinning it down. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Kiev is surrounded, right? So Kiev is surrounded and you have all of these uh, Ukraine officials, top level Ukraine officials, they're moving around pretty, pretty easily. Now, I don't know, maybe they were in Lviv. Maybe when all of this started, they moved to Lviv and, uh, and decided to set up headquarters in Lviv, the foreign minister, defense minister. But would it make sense that Zelensky stays put in Kiev while his entire team goes to Lviv or goes to uh, Poland? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing the Ukraine government, this, uh, this Zelensky government. It seems like they're, they're giving a lot of video speeches. They're moving around a lot, and they're, they're spending a lot of time in Poland. So, um, you know, it seems like they're in Warsaw, and they're speaking with, uh, 
with Polish officials. They're speaking with the Biden White House and they're cooking up something. And so a chemical false flag is in the works. I, I say it's like, like a 90, 95 percent given that a chemical false flag is being cooked up. And, and once again, it doesn't have to actually be in Ukraine. Maybe it will be a real false flag. Maybe they really will use chemical weapons. Uh, maybe they'll they'll go half and half like what they did in Syria and Duma. You know, they go into some some hospital. They have the cameras ready and uh, and they film the, the event and then they amplify it via the media and, and big tech. And it's it's not really a, a chemical weapon. It's it's something entirely different. Right. Uh, something entirely different. But uh, but but they get the, the cameras and they and they embellish it and, and then they put out the, the narrative, just like what happened in Syria. Um, it could be something like that, or it could be something that's totally, you know, fictitious. It could be done in Hollywood. It could be done in Poland. It could be done in, in any EU country, Germany, Netherlands, who knows? They could have an area set up, a staging area, and they have all their, their bid actors there. And, you know, this action, you know, ready action. And the cameras start to roll and, and, they, and they get the video and then they amplify it. And you know how they amplify it. They... They don't say, let's wait for an investigation. They don't say, let's give it some time and see what happens. They never say that. It's like the minute the false flag happens, you have a U.S. government official gets on camera, like literally within the hour, gets on camera, says that we have credible intelligence uh, information that the Russians were behind this. It's anonymous, of course, anonymous information that the Russians were behind this. And uh, this was a disgusting act. And, okay, they, they take out the script and... They read the script and uh, within that hour, within two, three hours, they, they have it in all of the, uh, the mainstream media. They're writing articles about this and all of big tech is amplifying it. And, and keep in mind, the way it works is that the mainstream media and big tech, they're prepped ahead of time. Before the false flag actually happens, they're given the, uh, the, the script. They're given the narrative as to what to write. I, uh, I've worked with... Uh, with, with some media companies in the area. And I know as a fact that they were getting their, their scripts from the EU, from Brussels and from the UK government. And basically what the journalists would do, so what, like when the EU would have an event or a meeting, they would, uh, this media company, they would actually get the, uh, the readout as to what was said in the meeting and what they wanted to say, what they needed to say, what they had to write about. In other words, this is the narrative that you're going to write about. This is what you're going to say. And basically what the journalists would do is they would just kind of, you know, uh, put the story together a little bit, you know, add some, some more context, sex it up a bit, and then they would publish it on their website. So they do this all the time. So this false flag, it's going to be prepared. It's going to be prepped. All of uh, the mainstream media, the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, the BBC, they're all going to get the, uh, the narrative. They're all going to get the script a couple of hours ahead of time. Big tech will be notified that this is about to go down so that they can amplify everything. And that's how it's going to happen. Because when, when the chemical uh, false flag happens in Ukraine, they're not going to, to say, what happened here? Let's have an investigation. Let's see what's going on. No, -uh. they're not going to do any of that. That's how you know it's a false flag. They're going to say Russia did it within an hour and then it's just going to be amplified and within 24 hours it's going to be everywhere. And then maybe that's where you have the, uh, maybe that's how you get the U.S. troops entering. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I'm just throwing stuff out there because for Biden to say it, in my opinion, for Biden to say it, it means he overheard it. <laughs> for Biden to say it, it means he overheard it. Now let's get to... Uh, to the second video that you saw, and that has to do with, uh, with Biden basically calling for regime change in Russia. So once again, he's saying the quiet part out loud. This is all about regime change in Russia. This is all about destroying Russia. This is all about uh, the balkanization of Russia. And then focusing on China and then going after China. Once you have Russia out of the way, you go after China. So. Ukraine is, it's not about Ukraine. The Biden White House, the EU, the collective West doesn't care one bit about Ukraine. 
Not one bit. This is all about destabilizing Russia, making Russia into a pariah state, making Russia suffer, and in their minds, leading to some sort of regime change. Because in the same speech, what you didn't hear in the uh, video that I played is that Biden also said, um, he had a quote, something along the lines of, and to the Russian people, this is not, uh, these sanctions are not, are not uh, targeted at you. This is not about making you suffer. So he said something along those lines. I'll put the quote up so you can read the exact quote, which when, uh, when Biden says something like that, when one of, one of these politicians says something like, to the Russian people or to the Iranian people or to the Syrian people, uh, this is not about, these sanctions are not about making you suffer. This is not about punishing you. We're not at war with you. He said something along those lines. But whenever they say those, uh, those canned lines, and those are canned lines, they mean the exact opposite. They mean to the Russian people, to the Iranian people, to the Syrian people. Uh, this is exactly about targeting you. and This is exactly about making you suffer. <laughs> that is what this is all about. Because at the end of the day, they, uh, they have an absolute hatred for Russians and for Russia. And they want to destroy the country and they want to balkanize the country and they want the people to suffer. Absolutely, they want the people to suffer. That's what sanctions are all about. You make the people suffer in hopes that they'll overthrow the government. And then when they overthrow the government, you can swoop in, take control of the new government, uh, break the country apart, um, plunge the country into decades of, of chaos and civil war, whatever it is, while, while you plunge and uh, plunder all of its resources. That's what, that's what regime change is all about. That's what, that's what it's all about. Look at Ukraine. Look at Ukraine. You had regime change, a coup in Ukraine, and what happened? Chaos. Chaos. Let's not forget, Biden gave the order to Poroshenko in 2015 to start the war with the Donbass. It was Biden's order. And uh, you had chaos and Hunter Biden and Devin Archer and Christopher Hines. They uh, flew into into Ukraine and started uh, making bank. They started plundering the country. Right. And Pelosi's kids and Romney and all of these people. So Biden says the quiet part out loud. This is about regime change. This is about removing Putin. That's what this is about. You know, you also have to remember, this is very personal for Biden. This is very personal for Biden. Um, you know, Ukraine was his country. In 2014, Obama appointed Joe Biden as the de facto leader of Ukraine. I'm going to sit down here because I'm going to read a quote. But uh, he appointed Biden as the leader of Ukraine. Biden, for two years, from 2014 to 2016, Joe Biden was making trips to Kiev, to Ukraine, every three months every three months. And he was overlooking the country that he was uh, ruling over. And of course, uh, on Air Force Two, Hunter was accompanying him. And I'm sure Devin Arch and all these people, and they were making money, 10% for the big guy. We have it all. It's, it's all out there. We've got all the, the videos, the emails, the documents, the, the laptop from hell. So for, for Biden, this is also very personal. It's, it's like saying, you know, Vladimir Putin, you came in and, and you... Uh, you stole my country. <laughs> you, uh, you messed up a good thing for me, my family, and, and all my cronies. So, you know, Biden is lashing out. He's pissed off. <laughs> he is pissed off. You know, Putin came in and ruined his game. The game for himself, his family, the Biden uh, crime machine, the Hillary Clinton crime family. They were involved in Ukraine. A lot of people were making a lot of money from Ukraine. A lot of EU officials we're making a lot of money in Ukraine. All those billions sent to Ukraine, all those billions over eight years, where do you think they all went? Where do you think all that money went to? All those billions. Didn't go into improving the country, that's for sure, because the country remained dead last in terms of uh, standard of living, in terms of corruption, dead last. So that's Biden. And uh, those were his, uh, his two speeches. At, and that is the big news, but I wanna read you one quote from Jake Sullivan, and I'll end the video uh, on this quote. Or maybe I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a couple of more things that I want to talk about. Maybe I'll do that in a second video. Let me throw in this quote and I'll end it, and I'll end this video here because I've been rambling for a while now. So Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan said this the other day, and I quote, 
The president will join our partners in imposing further sanctions on Russia and tightening the existing sanctions to crack down on evasion and ensure robust enforcement. This war will not end easily or rapidly. Biden's trip will send a powerful message that we are prepared and committed to this for as long as it takes. Let me read that last sentence again. This war will not end easily or rapidly. Biden's trip will send a powerful message that we are prepared and committed to this for as long as it takes. Does this sound like this is that we're going to get some sort of negotiated ceasefire or peace settlement? Does this sound that they're going to let Zelensky agree to a ceasefire? Does this sound like the U.S. wants peace in Ukraine? No, not at all. They want regime change, and they're going to push for regime change if it means the last Ukrainian man, woman, child, senior citizen, whatever, has to, uh, has to suffer. They're gonna, they want regime change if it means every EU citizen is going to be made poor because all these sanctions are going to demolish the European Union. We're all going to get poor. If you're in the <laughs> European Union, we're going to suffer because of this in a big, big way. People of Ukraine are already suffering, and they're going to suffer even more. And the U.S. is not going to stop. That is the message from Sullivan. That was the message from Biden. I want Putin out. I want regime change. And Sullivan said that they are going to fight to the very last Ukrainian. They want regime change. They want Ukraine to destabilize Russia. They want Ukraine to bog down Russia and to destabilize the, the country. That is their goal. They want sanctions to isolate Russia, to make Russia into a pariah state. They want the Russian people to suffer so that they lash out at their government. This is a full-scale war against Russia, and the U.S. is in it for the long haul. That was Sullivan's words. He said it. This is not going to be easy, and it's going to be long, and they're going to do whatever it takes. So, you know, the Russian government and the Russian leaders, they better understand this. They better understand that whatever they're doing in Ukraine, they better win outright. Otherwise, this is an existential threat for, for Russia, for the people of Russia, for the Russian Federation, for the country, the culture, its history. I mean, this is existential stuff because uh, the, uh, the globalists, the Biden White House, the EU, all of these people there, they've made up their minds. Hillary Clinton, uh, Soros, Schwab, they've made, they've made up their minds. They want Putin out, they want in, they want to get into Russia and they want to destroy the country, period. And they're starting with Ukraine. And then when they're done with Russia, they're gonna focus in on China. That's the plan. That is the plan. So I'm going to leave this video right there. Maybe I'll do a short video with some really, really quick updates as I'm walking here. But for this, for this video, I will end it there. And, uh, yeah. I'll do a second video as, as I'm walking. Go to Take care.